Amen. Greetings, greetings, and salutations on this morning. Amen. I just wanted to share something that the Lord has actually shared with me. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to go into prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. We thank you for, most of all, your word. Amen. The enrichment of your word. We thank you for that. We thank you for your love and kindness, which is better than life. We thank you for how you kept us and bought us and allowed us even to see yet another day. And we're grateful and we're thankful. Most of all for this word that we're going to share on this morning. We ask that you be with us and keep us and give us the words to say that we don't say anything that derives from our natural thoughts but that we speak only the oracles of you and the things that you've given us to say. We're forever grateful and we'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. I wanted to talk this morning about the Lord's Prayer. And I know that it's something that I learned early on as a child in Sunday school. And we called it the Lord's Prayer. And a couple of weeks ago, I was reading the Lord's Prayer. And it struck me in a way that it has never struck me before as I was reading it. And the Lord was giving his disciples instructions on how to pray. And you'll find this in Matthew chapter 6. And he was saying to them as he was listening to others pray. He said to them, he said, take heed. This is chapter 6 in Matthew verse 1. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have not, or you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. In other words, when you do something, and you do it for the sight of others or so that others can look upon you and give you praise for what it is that you're doing, then that praise that they give you, that's your reward. You don't have a reward of the Father. You've already received your reward by the praise of others. And you will find that there are people who do do things so that others can see and give them praise and give them glory. But the instruction here for us is we don't do that. This is not what you do. But when you do your alms, well, let's just go ahead with verse 30. But when thou doest alms, let not your left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. And that is the instruction that we've been given on how we do our alms. Amen? He said, don't do it to be seen of others, but do it in secret. So an alms would be something that you do or something that you give to others. Um, an exercising of maybe an ablation or a gift or, or a helping hand or anything that you do as in alms. That's what that would be. That's what 
that alms is. It said that thy alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So your reward for doing any of the things that you may do secretly is going to come from the father himself. And he is going to reward thee openly. He said, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to the Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now, this is not a literal closet. It can be, but I don't want to box it in as a literal closet because I don't want you to think that you can't pray unless you're in a closet. But Let's just use the analogy that the Lord used here and use closet because a closet is where you put your personal garments, um, your clothing, your shoes, uh, anything that you want to hide away or put away, you put in your closet. And nobody really knows what's in your closet but you. And so I understand the analogy that was used about when you pray, go into your secret closet. When you pray unto the Lord, that is a prayer between you and him and nobody else. That's a conversation that you're having between you and God. Nobody actually needs to hear that. Now, corporate prayer is different when we all get together and we all pray and we pray aloud. That's different. And we got to know the difference between the two. But if you've got a situation going on, it's something that you need to talk to the Father about. You do that privately. Everybody does not need to know what you're praying to the Lord about. And when you pray like this, the Lord rewards you openly. Amen. You get, you receive your reward from the Father openly. Now, it doesn't say that you're going to get it the very next day or the next week or within the hour. But you will be rewarded openly if you pray the way that he has instructed you to pray. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, I want to go back to the heathen that prays openly in the street. Amen. And, and back in the day, you know, we've evolved from there. But back in the day, they used to stand in the streets. And they just used to just pray openly. And they used fancy words or, or upper level words. They wanted to be heard for their much speaking or their eloquence in speaking when it came to their prayers that they were praying. And they were just repetitious, vain words. They didn't mean anything. They were just uh, words that were spoken into the air from a puff of air. So they didn't mean anything. And this is what they did and this is how they did. And the Lord is instructing us, we're not to do that. Now, we don't stand in the streets today and pray like that because we have evolved from there, but we still pray, okay? So, when we pray, he has instructed us on this wise. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And then one more instruction that he leaves. I don't want to leave verse 14 out. It says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now he added that in there because he said earlier, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then he explained why he said that. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And that's what we want and that's what we need. We need that forgiveness. We need that forgiveness. And a lot of us don't realize that we don't walk in forgiveness. And if we don't forgive our brother or our sister, then we can't be forgiven. And we must needs be forgiven because we need that. Can you turn that down a little? Okay, I had to step away for a minute. So, as I was looking at the Lord's Prayer, and I did some study on it, and it broke it down into about seven elements. And I looked at these elements, and I was intrigued by them, and so I wrote them down, and I wanted to share them. And these are the seven petitions. The first one is, hallowed be thy name. And that means holy, sanctified, and set apart. Hallowed be thy name. When you address the Lord, you address him by his deity. His name is holy. His name is separate. His name is sanctified and set apart. The second petition is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy ways of doing things. Here and now, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Remember the kingdom. I don't know, some of you may have remembered the lives that I've done, but the kingdom is the way of life of the king. Amen. And the king sets the stage for his kingdom and how he wants it ran. And anybody that is in a violation of the way the king wants things done, they're put in prison. They're marked and they're labeled. And a lot of them are put into prison. But this says, thy kingdom come. So in order for the kingdom to come, we must know and understand the ways of Jesus that we may act in them. And his way is love and kindness. He said in his word, with love and kindness have I drawn them. His way is a forgiving way, a loving way. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the third petition. He wants the kingdom to come so that his will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And that's exactly what's going to happen at the end time. The kingdom of God, which is in heaven now, it's going to be on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven becomes one with the kingdom of God. And I had never really focused in on that or really thought about that until the day that I actually read that. And the light of God illuminated it. And I looked at it in a way that I had never looked at it before. 
And I said, oh, my God. And as I began to do some more in-depth study on it, I found these seven petitions. And they helped me a lot. And um, the Lord said, share, so this is what I'm doing. Number four is give us this day our daily bread. Amen. How many know that the word of God is our daily bread? Amen. Naturally, we have bread that we eat daily. And the scripture lets us know as well, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And the word of God is our daily bread. That means you should read a scripture daily. There shouldn't be a day that goes by that you have not sat down somewhere and pulled out your Bible or pulled out your iPad or your desktop or your computer or even your telephone and take some time to spend with the Lord by reading in his word. Amen. The daily bread. This is something that needs to be done daily. And then he goes on and he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And we spoke about Amen. And there's even a parable where a man, a, a man owed another man some money and he demanded that the money be given him on that day. And that servant said, oh, I, I don't have it. And so the good man said, take him, bind him up, sell his assets and his family and get me my money. And the, And I'm paraphrasing, I'm sure you know. And the man said, oh, don't do that. Just give me a little time to, to get it together. And, and the good man said, okay, look, just forget it. You, you can't pay it. You're not going to be able to pay it. Don't even worry about it. Your debt is forgiven. And this same man went and got somebody that owed him some money. And he took this individual because this individual could not pay the way he could not pay. And he put this individual in prison. And those that were around that knew what had happened to him earlier went back to the good man and told him all that they had seen and what had been done. And the good man came back and he said, look, I heard that you put someone in prison because they owed you and they couldn't pay. He said, so this is what I'm going to do. I am going to put your debt that I took from you back on you because you couldn't take the forgiveness that I gave you and apply it to another person. So if you can't forgive him, then I can't forgive you. And that correlates with the scripture. Amen. If we can't forgive others, then our debts are not going to be forgiven. And scripture says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then it goes on to say, and lead us not into temptation. In other words, don't weave us in a state of temptation and we know that he's not going to do that because the scripture lets us know that with every temptation there is a way of escape you can escape the temptation because God being faithful has put that escape in there for you and it's up to you whether or not that you receive that form of escape. You don't have to fall into temptation, but you can be delivered from evil. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord's prayer is something that is very powerful. Very, very powerful indeed. Amen. And again, I learned it 
as a very young child in kindergarten. And it was just the Lord's Prayer. I never gave it much uh, much ado about it. You know, it was the Lord's Prayer. We learned it. We said it. We got to the point where we could recite it. Amen. But it didn't awaken in my spirit the way it did a few weeks ago when I read it and when I did the study on it. Now, this is just the Lord's Prayer. This is not a, a genuine. There's all kinds of different prayers that we pray. Amen. And we will go into those later in the week. But right now, I'm just talking about the Lord's Prayer, how he instructed us to pray. And it's very important, amen, that we pray this prayer at some point throughout the day. That this would be a prayer that you would pray. That you would acknowledge the Father. Amen. Holy is his name. Sacred is his name. In so much so, in the Old Testament, we didn't know him by this name. But we've got it now. Amen. His name is Jesus. And that name is holy. And it's to be separate. Amen. Amen. So I would admonish you today to reread the Lord's Prayer and see what it says to you and the different elements or petitions that's in the Lord's Prayer. And what he says to his disciples before he goes in to the Lord's Prayer. He shows the difference between, between praying amiss and praying to get the attention of God. A lot of times we pray prayers and we pray them amiss. Amen. That means we pray them without even really having the substance that we need to have when we pray. You can't come to God nilly-willy or any kind of way. There is a way that you approach him that gets his attention. Amen. And he has shown us the way. You want the attention of God when you pray? Pray this prayer. Because this is the prayer that Jesus gave us to pray. Amen. So this is one of the prayers that we should pray. Now, like I said, there are other elements to prayer. And we will discuss those. But right now, we're zoning in on the Lord's prayer. He gave us word for word, verbatim, what it is to say when we pray. He told us, don't be like this one. Don't be like that one. Because they have their reward. Their reward comes from men. I don't want a reward that comes from men for, for several reasons. One, it really doesn't mean anything when men reward you. Because when they give to you, they have the power to take back. Like what we used to say when we were children. Don't be an Indian giver. You gave it to me and now you want to take it back. No. And that's what man has a tendency of doing. He has a tendency of raising you up and praising you. And then he has a tendency of tearing you down. Just like with certain movie stars. Oh, they raise them up. They get Os Oscars and they get this and they get that. But one thing that they do wrong. And that's the one thing that they zone in on. And they take away all the accolades. And it's as if nothing you've ever done good has been acknowledged. They throw all the good that you do in the sea of forgetfulness, which is opposite of what Jesus says. He throws all that you do bad in the sea of forgetfulness. So there's such a stark opposition in between what God does and what man does. I don't want anything from man. I don't want anything from man. And if I want anything from the Lord, then I'm going to do what he says to do, how he says to do. And man, I don't want to hold you long. I just wanted to share that with you. It's something that has been bubbling over in my soul for weeks. Amen. And today the Lord said, 
go ahead and do this. Go ahead and share this. So that's what I'm doing with you on today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that you've allotted us to come before your people, amen, with a word that has been received directly from you. I pray that it is received of them in their spirit. I pray that they go back and they read the um, Lord's Prayer, amen. As a child, we called it the Our Father. And I pray that they read it, and I pray that the light of you illuminates it, oh God, so that they can see what it is that you're saying to them, that this is instruction, something to be shared, amen, something to be shared. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we give you the glory and the honor for even this time of sharing, amen, and we just say go in peace on this morning and have the most wonderful day that you can have, in Jesus' name, amen.